Can you help us some more about the Antichrist? I don't want to jump over there, but, no, that's but what will he look like? What, yeah, just from your, uh, the, the clues, good, you're, have, you're, like a, a you're like a detective. Yeah, what are you the are. clues, the Excellent. Antichrist clues that we should look for? Because gonna be he's like, not going to be probably a mean old... He's not going to come with horns and a pitchfork. He's no. probably going to have a great personality, probably. That's is it going to be with AI, too? Is it going to be I, like, I, you know, like a, a, a like, human cyborg, someone who has all of this, these implants and it makes him so intelligent and wise, but the deception is going to be, you want to know what he's going to be like, okay? Well, this is where, why the deception is going to be so strong. Everyone's going to look for a Solomon, someone who is wealthy, someone who is famous, someone who is wise, someone who has all this power, and people are going to say, let him solve the problems in the Middle East. You know, and let him solve all of the world's problems. I think it's going to be someone who is very popular mm -hmm. and easily going to be able to sway the masses, which is why we have to be so careful. Because uh, he's going to, I think he's going to come across as a believer as well. Now, you know, I can't remember, I think it was Bertrand Russell, I'm not sure who, but someone said, you know, I convince any, anybody to do anything with a large enough army. Okay. Wait, say it again. Wait. I. He said, I can make anybody do or believe anything with a large enough army. With a large enough army, yep. I mean, people, they want to survive or whatever. And so when they want to survive, they're going to look for, okay, if, if, if you're a believer, if you're not a believer, it doesn't matter. I want to survive. I'm going to take the mark. Uh, you know, but if you're a believer, you're going to think, great. I mean, what do I do if I, I can't buy food? What do I do if I, if I can't do this without taking this mark? Well, then you're going to... Uh, the confused Christian is going to say, well, it's legal, so therefore God has to honor what man said. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, whose laws, uh, when he talks about lawlessness, mm -hmm. is he talking about the laws of the United Nations? Uh, is he talking yeah. about the laws of Las Vegas? He's <laughs> talking about God's laws. Yes. That's right. And that's where we're at today. Political governments decide what is morally right. And they're and putting that into machines that you're bringing into your home. And the machines with their morality standard are deciding if you're breaking the mortal code. And we've already gone to a court system that decides everything for us now. They even have, uh, there was this one um, TV show called Lie to Me, where they tried to see if you're lying or not. Okay. Well, they've created artificial intelligence program that can look at the person who's committed the crime to see if they're lying or not on the stand. They may end up replacing jurors with AI machines to see if a person is telling the truth by the micro expressions of your eyebrow and your lip. And they say that's the way to find out if you're telling the truth. They may, uh, and people may say, well, hey, it's supposed to be a jury of our peers. Well, hey, now they're marrying robots, for heaven's sake. These yeah. people are crazy. Right. Uh, so I believe that artificial intelligence is going to be so persuasive. They say, like, the exponential curve is growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. We are going to see things that we've never seen before in history over the next two years like you've never believed. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, you said yes. to look at it through what a hebrew hebraic yes. lens yes <laughs> what does exactly. that mean what does that mean well everyone how many of you have heard of matthew 24 okay everyone knows matthew 24 <laughs> if they watch about. my show <laughs> we, they, <laughs> well thank you <laughs> the thing is this most christians do not know anything about purim they do not know anything about hanukkah but Matthew 24 is Hanukkah happening again. In Ecclesiastes 1.9, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. That which has happened is that which will happen again. And they say the one thing we learn from history is we don't learn from history. Right. And, yes. and, and right. so Matthew 24, I, sh I go through, and I believe it's in uh, the DVDs, and uh, I think it's in the book as well, how Matthew 24 is Hanukkah being repeated. So many of the events that happened in Hanukkah happened in Matthew 24. When we're, when the, we have to not read Matthew 24 from our Greco-Western mind. We have to look at it. What were the Jews thinking at that time? Right. That's how we need to look at it. You have it in your book. It's chapter 10, Matthew 24, Hanukkah and the Messiah. Exactly. Yes. It's, that's so important because... I, I do not want you guys to be deceived. Right. I do not want believers to be deceived. Right. So my book, I believe, is like a clarion call. I am so passionate about this book. And, yeah. the, and the Bible warns, <laughs> but the Bible warns and yes. warns and yes. warns about the deception that's coming and the deceptions here. Mm -hmm. I am shocked how many millions and millions and millions and millions of Americans are deceived. Totally. Totally deceived.